this is like the untapped or like thing that we should like tap into for the next part, which is the um, la um, labeling as the the first people, and it's like going back to that kind of um, what I'm calling like organic mind, like that what I also um, roughly call disembodied poetics, like. The playful way of using language when you're not like overthinking yeah. it, when you're kind of just like tossing it back and forth. It's like when, it's like when you're jamming, yeah. you know, like you're playing out and you're jamming, you're you're not thinking about the notes. <laughs> you're just playing around with it. You know, you're not thinking about okay, this is a this is a third and this is an you know, yeah, you're, you can't. you're not doing that. Yeah. <laughs> You just play with it, and you know you create in, in the middle of it, and you know the variations of everyone and all the other musicians. But <laughs> you're not, you know, it's it's yeah, it's like playing, real play. <laughs> That's the key. Kevin, so what what have you been uh, thinking about for for this new story that you want to like play with? Well, I just, I, there, there was a couple of concepts that I had batted around, like, to, to develop. And I don't know if we ever talked about it, but um, there was one, one concept was to go sort of mentally back, like I'd sort of touched on with the, uh, the, uh, the way the native uh, the comment that I had shared with you mm -hmm. on the one post that I made about how the native people fell so in love with the with the, the land and with the soil that um, they found themselves inseparable in so they could they could hear the the symphony of, of the earth as she woke up and sang to them and drove their drums drove their drums into harmony with the uh, with the melody that that was was ringing in them from just feeling just no no duality about existence where their their dream world and their living world was only modulated by by the the push of nature and, and wind and um, the change of the seasons and just sort of the, like on the second comment about understanding underneath the layer of the causality of this aggressive energy that you know spread mainly from Europe across the world and now is seems to be you know seems to be decolonizing from you know the the true truly civilized people and their their beautiful voices now becoming so much more important and structured into into our hope is maybe that um you know that is the uh, the tipping point in our harmony where you know where we are within nature and within ourselves it, that's where that hundredth monkey effect takes place and i had a really strong wave of feeling that today um, on this full moon day and noticed that I did a part of um, a bigger problem in soul clearing where I had some tension about within my family because I'm, I'm a separated child within two families so there was a whole wanting to be connected to them but not really being interconnected to either family but also being the older person and this clearing took place today and I I could feel what I could only conceptualize in this hundredth monkey effect about we are stepping into this larger component of the the dream that is us and and like uh, Chris Duguid said in the comment when I had posted about writing this story he said that we are writing it we are writing it now and it's it's like you guys said about uh the necessity of all of this crazy and sickness right the necessity of it because 
it's the only way we can accurately see how you know how ridiculous our physical world is and how it makes our dream world more important and more interconnected and more more woven like um like if we're all drops of dew on the net of indra like just putting um the energy the light um in it and letting us all see the you know our reflection of each other more more clearly and um it, that's almost always done through some level of chaos or struggle or feedback loop where people recognize they're not in in a level of harmony they recognize that harmony is all around them but they're standing in the middle of it as an outsider and going what why is this like this you know and uh, why are all the people around me saying the same thing in their story about you know this is wrong and this is wrong but that chaotic resonance still keeps coming back and affecting their quality of life and their ability to just be you know kind of like a neutral spirit on the world so that was just part of where i saw people going into the dream together and drifting back into the time before when the world worked you know we're we're so many cycles through having gone so close to a perfect singularity and resonance and becoming co-creators and all the way to coming out of it where we are now where people entangle their energy to something that they hope to gain some of the physical sensations or pleasures from discounting the the cost of um offering their attention to those things and now that that's become you know the gaslighting is so severe and intense it it's turned into something where it's almost inescapable especially the way technology plays such a major role in our lives so yeah. that was one, one of them totally in, in the same way too there's there's this idea that i've been playing around with and so um who became which is like the the one like entity that encompasses everything of like the mayans or whatever but he like sp- springs up uh baku to like teach him the art of dreaming and then like uh in in my tale is like baku forgets to tell him oh that the dream is fake but the dreaming is real and so he falls in love with like the dream and he forgets to wake up and then like and creates like you know all of this <laughs> and then like baku gets like a uh, uh, banished to the underworld for 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 like uh uh letting the god fall asleep <laughs> essentially uh yeah. but uh that that was like one of these uh, interesting ideas um but i think to what what is going on or like this like um weird sense of like i have this like weird i like weird sense that like this it's like these beginning of like understanding how powerful like dreaming actively dreaming is and like we've li- we we like there's like birds and spurts of like this like really weird um sense of it like happening but also to of like not understanding of like w- wielding it and like there was this thing that I said in tech and there's these two different um articles one was like uh, science has this problem of branding and i read the article and it was pretty good but like also to i was like oh the word branding right and then the other one was um about like not being evil and and this other thing but anyways i go on to say about like <laughs> kind of like even using the word branding is like collapsing this thing into like these market like making turning turning what what is harmonic into something plastic <laughs> like just using branding you know like but using uh something like uh, this deeper more um essential thing that I'm talking about and like uh what what we're at 
is is um talking about you know uh some say the 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 first sham like the the first poets were the gods like and what the aborigines are talking about like the original sense of like poetry or, or poesis is like creating that that space in which we're, we're in the dance of the unfolding of like consciousness and like we're just like slightly out of step of that like <laughs> you know like it's it always feels like oh my god we could either like like just like hop skip and jump like back into the next groove like like if this was like a record and like we're just slightly off like the groove <laughs> we need to like put it back in the right groove <laughs> If that makes sense to anybody out there, please email me at satoridprotonmail.com. <laughs> <laughs>